Welcome to the Ultimate DP700 Exam Masterclass. Are you ready to crack the DP700 exam in one go? You're in the right place. In this session, we'll arm you with powerful insights and hand-picked questions that can make all the difference in your exam performance. We've scanned the web using intelligent crawlers to gather the most critical and high-impact questions, all compiled into one powerful PDF resource. You can download it from the link in the description. Not only will we explore these must-practice questions, but we'll also share real exam experiences and pro tips to give you that competitive edge. Let's dive into the key questions that could shape your success. Question 1. You have a fabric warehouse named DW1. DW1 contains a table that stores sales data and is used by multiple sales representatives. You plan to implement row-level security. You need to ensure that the sales representatives can see only their respective data. Which warehouse object do you require to implement RLS? A. Security policy. B. Table. C. Trigger. D. Stored procedure. Speaking head the correct answer is A. Security policy. Explanation. Security policy is required to implement row-level security in a fabric warehouse. The policy ensures that users can access only the rows they are authorized to see. Question 2. You have a fabric workspace that contains a real-time intelligence solution and an event house. Users report that from One Lake File Explorer, they cannot see the data from the event house. You enable One Lake availability for the event house. What will be copied to One Lake? A. Only data added to new databases that are added to the event house. B. Only the existing data in the event house. C. No data. D. Both new data and existing data in the event house. E. Only new data added to the event house. Speaking head the correct answer is E. Only new data added to the event house. Explanation. Only newly ingested data is stored in one lake as Delta Parquet files. Existing data is not copied. Question 3. You have a fabric workspace that contains a warehouse named Warehouse 1. You have an on-premises Microsoft SQL Server database named Database 1. That is accessed by using an on-premises data gateway. You need to copy data from Database 1 to Warehouse 1. Which item should you use? A. An Apache Spark job definition. B. A data pipeline. C. A data flow Gen 1 data flow. D. An event stream. Speaking head the correct answer is B. A data pipeline. Explanation. Data pipelines support connectivity via gateways and handle orchestration. To move data between hybrid sources and fabric destinations. Question 4. You have a fabric workspace. You have semi-structured data. You need to read the data by using T-SQL, KQL, and Apache Spark. The data will only be written using Spark. What should you use to store the data? A. A lake house. B. An event house. C. A data mart. D. A warehouse. Speaking head the correct answer is B. An event house. Explanation. Event houses support T-SQL, KQL, and Spark for read operations, making them ideal for semi-structured and streaming data. Question 5. You have a fabric workspace that contains a warehouse named Warehouse 1. You have an on-premises Microsoft SQL Server database named Database 1. That is accessed by using an on-premises data gateway. You need to copy data from Database 1 to Warehouse 1. Which item should you use? A. A data flow Gen 1 data flow. B. A data pipeline. C. A KQL query set. D. A notebook. Speaking head the correct answer is B. A data pipeline. Explanation. Data pipelines in Fabric can copy data from on-prem SQL Server through a gateway. Into the warehouse efficiently and securely. Question 6 asterisk this is similar to fifth question but with different options set. Please mark accordingly in exam. You have a Fabric workspace that contains a warehouse named Warehouse 1. You have an on-premises Microsoft SQL Server database named Database 1 that is accessed by using an on-premises data gateway. You need to copy data from Database 1 to Warehouse 1. Which item should you use? 
A. An Apache Spark job definition. B. A data pipeline. C. A data flow gen 1 data flow. D. An event stream. Speaking head the correct answer is B. A data pipeline. Explanation. A data pipeline in Microsoft Fabric enables copying data from on-premises SQL Server, via data gateway, to Warehouse 1, supporting both scheduled and orchestrated data movement. Question 7. You have a Fabric workspace named Workspace 1 that contains a notebook named Notebook 1. In Workspace 1, you create a new notebook named Notebook 2. You need to ensure that you can attach Notebook 2 to the same Apache Spark session as Notebook 1. What should you do? A. Enable high concurrency for notebooks. B. Enable dynamic allocation for the Spark pool. C. Change the runtime version. D. Increase the number of executors. Speaking head the correct answer is A. Enable high concurrency for notebooks. Explanation. High concurrency allows notebooks to share a single session. Enabling collaboration and improved Spark resource utilization. Question 8. You have a fabric warehouse named DW1. DW1 contains a table that stores sales data and is used by multiple sales representatives. You plan to implement row-level security RLS. You need to ensure that the sales representatives can see only their respective data. Which warehouse object do you require to implement RLS? A. Stored procedure. B. Constraint. C. Schema. D. Function. Speaking head the correct answer is D. Function. Explanation. To implement row-level security RLS in a fabric warehouse, you define a predicate function, usually an inline table valued function, that filters rows based on user identity. This function is then used in a security policy to restrict data access per user. Question 9. You have a Fabric deployment pipeline that uses three workspaces named Dev, Test, and Prod. You need to deploy an event house as part of the deployment process. What should you use to add the event house to the deployment process? A. GitHub Actions. B. A deployment pipeline. C. An Azure DevOps pipeline. Speaking head the correct answer is C. An Azure DevOps pipeline. Explanation. Fabric's native deployment pipelines currently do not support deploying event houses. For such unsupported artifacts, using an Azure DevOps pipeline with REST APIs or PowerShell scripts is the recommended approach. Question 10. You have a Fabric workspace named Workspace 1 that contains a warehouse named Warehouse 1. You plan to deploy Warehouse 1 to a new workspace named Workspace 2. As part of the deployment process, you need to verify whether Warehouse 1 contains invalid references. The solution must minimize development effort. What should you use? A. A database project. B. A deployment pipeline. C. A Python script. D. A T-SQL script. Speaking head the correct answer is B. A deployment pipeline. Explanation. A deployment pipeline in Microsoft Fabric can automatically detect invalid references, like broken dependencies, when promoting items like Warehouse 1 between workspaces. It's the easiest and lowest effort method, requiring no custom scripting or manual validation. Question 11. You have a Fabric workspace that contains a real-time intelligence solution and an event house. Users report that from One Lake File Explorer, they cannot see the data from the event house. You enable one lake availability for the event house. What will be copied to one lake? A. Only data added to new databases that are added to the event house. B. Only the existing data in the event house. C. No data. D. Both new data and existing data in the event house. E. Only new data added to the event house. Speaking head the correct answer is E. Only new data added to the event house. Explanation. When you enable one lake availability for an event house in Microsoft Fabric, only data ingested after enabling it is written to one lake in Delta Parquet format. Existing, historical, data is not copied, so users will only see new data from that point onward in one lake file explorer. Question 12. You have a Fabric workspace named Workspace 1. 
you plan to integrate Workspace ONE with Azure DevOps. You will use a Fabric deployment pipeline named Deploy Pipeline ONE to deploy items from Workspace ONE to higher environment workspaces as part of a medallion architecture. You will run Deploy Pipeline ONE by using an API call from an Azure DevOps pipeline. You need to configure API authentication between Azure DevOps and Fabric. Which type of authentication should you use? A. Service Principle B. Microsoft Enter Username and Password C. Manage Private Endpoint D. Workspace Identity Speaking head the correct answer is A. Service Principle Explanation To securely authenticate API calls from Azure DevOps to Microsoft Fabric, you should use a service principle, registered in Microsoft Entra ID. It supports token-based authentication and is the recommended method for automating deployments in CI slash CD pipelines. Question 13. You have a Fabric workspace named Workspace 1 that contains an Apache Spark job definition named Job 1. You have an Azure SQL database named Source 1 that has public internet access disabled. You need to ensure that Job 1 can access the data in Source 1. What should you create? A. An on-premises data gateway. B. A managed private endpoint. C. An integration runtime. D. A data management gateway. Speaking head the correct answer is B. A managed private endpoint. Explanation. Since Source 1, Azure SQL Database, has public access disabled, Job 1 in Fabric must use a managed private endpoint to securely connect over private network routes. This enables secure, private communication between Fabric Compute, Spark, and Azure resources without public exposure. Question 14. You have a Fabric workspace that contains a lake house and a notebook named Notebook 1. Notebook 1 reads data into a data frame from a table named Table 1 and applies transformation logic. The data from the data frame is then written to a new delta table named Table 2 by using a merge operation. You need to consolidate the underlying parquet files in table 1. Which command should you run? A. Vacuum. B. Broadcast. C. Optimize. D. Cache. Speaking head the correct answer is C. Optimize. Explanation. The optimize command is used in Apache Spark, Delta Lake, to consolidate small parquet files in a delta table like table 1, improving query performance. It compacts files without deleting data, unlike Vacuum, which is used for cleanup of deleted files. Question 15. You have five fabric workspaces. You are monitoring the execution of items by using Monitoring Hub. You need to identify in which workspace a specific item runs. Which column should you view in Monitoring Hub? A. Start Time B. Capacity C. Activity Name D. Submitter E. Item Type F. Job Type G. Location Speaking head the correct answer is G. Location Explanation In the monitoring hub of Microsoft Fabric, the location, column indicates the workspace where a specific item, like a pipeline, notebook, or job, is executed. This helps you track and manage activities across multiple Fabric workspaces. Question 16 you have a Fabric workspace that contains a warehouse named DW1. DW1 is loaded by using a notebook named Notebook1. You need to identify which version of Delta was used when Notebook1 was executed. What should you use? A. Real-time hub. B. One Lake Data Hub. C. The Admin Monitoring Workspace. D. Fabric Monitor. E. The Microsoft Fabric Capacity Metrics App. Speaking head the correct answer is D. Fabric Monitor. Explanation. To identify the Delta Lake version used by a notebook execution in Microsoft Fabric, you should use Fabric Monitor, which provides detailed Spark session logs, environment configurations, and runtime info. Question 17. You have a Fabric workspace that contains a semantic model named Model 1. You need to dynamically execute and monitor the refresh progress of Model 1. What should you use? A. Dynamic Management Views in Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, SSMS. B. 
Monitoring Hub. C. Dynamic Management Views in Azure Data Studio. D. A semantic link in a notebook. Speaking head the correct answer is D. A semantic link in a notebook. Explanation. Using a semantic link in a notebook allows you to programmatically trigger and monitor the refresh of a semantic model like Model 1 in Microsoft Fabric. This method supports dynamic execution, real-time progress tracking, and custom logic via Python or Spark scripts, ideal for automated or advanced workflows. Question 18. You have a Fabric workspace named Workspace 1 that contains the following items. A Microsoft Power BI report named Report 1. A Power BI dashboard named Dashboard 1. A semantic model named Model 1. A Lake House named Lake House 1. Your company requires that specific governance processes be implemented for the items. Which items can you endorse in Fabric? A. Lake House 1, Model 1, and Dashboard 1 only. B. Lake House 1, Model 1, Report 1 and Dashboard 1. C. Report 1 and Dashboard 1 only. D. Model 1, Report 1, and Dashboard 1 only. E. Lake House 1, Model 1, and Report 1 only. Speaking head the correct answer is E. Lake House 1, Model 1, and Report 1 only. Explanation. Dashboards cannot be endorsed in Fabric. Endorsement is available for Lake Houses, Semantic Models, and Reports. Question 19. You have a Fabric workspace named Workspace 1. Your company acquires GitHub licenses. You need to configure source control for Workspace 1 to use GitHub. The solution must follow the principle of least privilege. Which permissions do you require to ensure that you can commit code to GitHub? A. Actions read and write and contents read and write. B. Actions read and write only. C. Contents read and write only. D. Contents read and commit statuses read and write. Speaking head the correct answer is C. Contents read and write only. Explanation. Contents read and write is all you need to commit to GitHub via Fabric. No need for broader GitHub permissions. Question 20. You have a Fabric workspace named Workspace 1. You plan to configure Git integration for Workspace 1 by using an Azure DevOps Git repository. An Azure DevOps admin creates the required artifacts to support the integration of Workspace 1. Which details do you require to perform the integration? A. The organization, project, Git repository, and branch. B. The personal access token, PAT, for Git authentication and the Git repository URL. C. The project, Git repository, branch, and Git folder. D. The Git repository URL and the Git folder. Speaking head the correct answer is A. The organization, project, Git repository, and branch. Explanation. These four identifiers are required for Git integration. Organization, project, repo name, and branch. Check the description for the PDF download link and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for upcoming episodes. Thanks you!